Hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the User of Bricks channel, or welcome back to the User of Bricks channel. Today we are going to look at two ways of achieving creeper-like behavior. And remember, I will have a link to the GitHub page where I have uploaded this workspace. For the first way of creating a custom creeper-like mob, you want to create a living entity. I know, shocker. I'm just going to call it creeper the vanilla way. And then you really can do whatever you want for your visuals and sound. I'm just going to click a couple things here and then it really doesn't matter what you do in behavior or inventory or triggers or even spawning for that matter. So the only thing that matters is in AI goals. And in here you will want to change the entity base to a creeper. It will override most of your tasks that you put down here where in this procedure like section uh, for the AI tasks, it will override most of these. Uh, so just be a little cautious of what you do in here because it may or may not actually do anything. Now, this way works really well if you want something that acts exactly like the standard vanilla creeper, with the exception of all of the triggers and looks and all of that. If that is what you want, that's good. If you want something different or more customizable, then the second way I am going to show you is the way for you. To start off this next way, you will want to create an entity, as usual. And then after filling out everything for the first tab, second tab, third tab, uh, and spawning, uh, as well as the AI goals, you will want to create the same tasks that you see me having right here. So the attack, insights, uh, do melee, walk around, fight attacker mobs, look around, and float in water. There are exceptions here, of course, because this is custom. You can really do almost anything you want. Uh, if you don't want your mob to attack other mobs that attack it, this will not make it explode on them. It'll just me melee attack them, you will want to get rid of this block right here. Another exception would be if you want your mob to sink in water, then you want to obviously get rid of the float in water. Or you can add conditions or really whatever. And for this last exception, note that it does not in fact blow up the mob, rather it will cause the mob to target specific entities, and I am talking about this attack inside nearby entities of type block here. If you want your mob to explode on an entity other than the player, just go ahead and change this uh, value here to whatever you want. If you want it to trigger or attack or try to blow up on more than just that one mob or player or whatever, then you just add another one of these blocks and make sure that you put the most important entities highest up on this list and keep track of what entities you choose because you will need to input all of these entities into a procedure later on. Once you have finished all of this and changed anything else that you want to change in here, so the breeding or make it do ranged attacks, I don't know why you'd want that, you're trying to make it explode, but anyway. Once you have finished that, you can change anything else on this page except for the entity base option. Leave that at none. 
we don't want it to be messing with what we are doing later on. This is also a good point to click the save and keep open button as we don't want to lose any of our progress this far. Now let's get on to the explosions. Go to the triggers tab and create a tick procedure by clicking this green plus icon here. That will make a new procedure in a new tab up above. The first thing you will want to do is you will want to create these three local variables. Two number variables called distance and max distance, and then one logic variable called player in range, though you should change this to whatever other entity you are trying to make your mob blow up on. Or if you have multiple entities, I suggest you just name it entity in range. I am going to refer to it as player in range from here on out. The distance variable is the one we will be incrementing to seek out where a player or whatever entity at which it will try to blow up on. The max distance is the shocker. Max distance the mob can be from the player or entity at which it will try to blow up. After you've created all of these variables, you will want to initialize them to the values you want. So the player in range to false, the distance to zero, or you can put this at a positive integer if you don't want the mob to blow up if the entity is too close. And then the max distance being the max distance at which the mob will try to blow up. And note on this max distance, you will likely want this to be less than uh, the explosion size that is created just so that it actually hits the player versus doing nothing and just blowing up some way away from the player. Next, you will need a while loop as you can see here. The while loops are located in the flow control area right here, the while loop. And as you can see, you will want to have it be a less than or equal to sign just so that it will get to the max distance when we increment it. Next, you will want to get a for each entity at location block. This is found in world management at the very bottom. It is right here for each entity as entity iterator at blah, 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 blah. You'll want to change this to external inputs so that you don't have to scroll as far. And then for each of the X, Y, and Z locations, you will want to change them to their corresponding look position of whatnot of the entity. These can be found in entity data. Again, at the very bottom, they are right here, the look X, Y, and Z positions. And you will want to change the default value of five for the distance to our local distance variable, leaving the fluid mode and the block mode at their defaults. You will also want to change the cube size to two as we don't want it to be too large. After this, you will want to add an if statement. This can be found again in flow control right at the top. You will also want the entity is subtype of, which is located in the logic section right down here, and you will want to change the entity to the entity iterator block, which can be copied from from up here, or you can go to the Minecraft component section and get it from right there. If, uh, if you also have a player as your thing, you will want to create an ands block that ha checks also if the player is in survival and adventure mode. Both of those can be gotten from the entity data. Actually, they may be in player. Yeah, right here. Is entity slash target entity in game mode. And then the and block, as many of you likely already know, you take this block and switch it to an and. And I like to use these as external inputs. Sometimes it can be easier to read than the inline inputs. Also, if you have more than one entity, 
remember your list from before that you added to your AI goals, you will want to create a is entity iterator subtype of for each of those entities. You will also want another one of these blocks that instead of being an and, it'll be an or. And you'll just insert that right there and continue on and just do that as many times as you have another entity. Inside this ifs block, you will want to change the player variable or player in range to true, and then you want to break out of loop. The break out of loop is in the flow control right here at the bottom, right before all of the return statement blocks. Next, you will want to increase the distance variable like so and place it inside the while loop, but outside the for each entity loop. Now we get to the fun part. And for this part, we will need to go back to the main workspace after clicking save and keep open to our procedure so that we, again, don't lose any of our progress. And we need to create an effect. This effect will act as our countdown timer till the explosion happens. The keen-eyed among you might ask, why not use NBT tags? You showed how to use them in a previous video for timers. And the reason as to not use them is for entities, they aren't always synced between client side and server side like they are usually with blocks or items. So we want something a little more reliable and synced. So we are going to use an effect. So in our effect, all we care about is that it is named fuse and that all, and I mean all, the checked boxes are unchecked, as well as leaving the unchecked boxes as unchecked. And then we can hit the save and keep open, as we will be coming back to this in a moment. You will now want to go back to your tick procedure and add an if-else statement, again, flow control, and in the if placement, you will want to put your custom in player, range, player in range variable. At the top of that, you will want to place a set entity in com cobweb block found in the entity management section. It is right, oh, come on. Yeah, right here. Underneath which we will want to add an if block that has a not block found in the logic tab, and then a has entity active potion with the thing set to fuse. And then this block can be found in the entity data section, I believe somewhere in the center. Yeah, right here, has active potion. Then inside this if statement, we will want to put an add potion block that looks like the one like this found in the entity management section right here. We will want to set the effect to our fuse and the level can be whatever you want between one and 255 as it doesn't matter. The ticks for the length will be set to however long you want it to take before your mob explodes. I put in five ticks for mine. And then ambient and particles, you will both want to set that to false and then make sure it's your event target entity. Underneath that, we will want to play our primed sound. You can either use the creeper primed sound or a custom sound which you input, the category being hostile. And this block can be found in world management right at the top here. You can set the level or pitch to whatever you want. It standard seems to work just fine for me. After this, there is only one thing needed in this procedure, and that is putting a remove effect block found again in the entity management tab and set that to our custom fuse. And then you can just save mod elements as we don't need to work with it 
any further. Now we want to go to our Fuse Effect and open the Triggers page. In here, we will want to create a When Effect Expires procedure. Again, clicking the green plus icon will do that just fine. Inside this procedure, you will want an if statement with an is entity subtype block set to your custom entity. Remember, we saved it earlier, so it will be in the list. And this, again, is found in the logic tab. Inside of the if statement, you will want to add a despawn a block found in the entity management section to despawn our entity so it doesn't drop anything like the standard creeper. You can omit this if you want it to have drops. And then you'll want to add an explode at location block found in, again, world management. You'll want to leave the X, Y, and Z however they are Put your power however you want the explosion to be, however big. Uh, six seems to be pretty big, similar to the charged creeper size. And then the type can be whatever you want, break, destroy, none, whatever you want. And then you can save the mod elements and get out of there. And then again, save your effect. The last thing is purely visual and you don't need it. And the thing I am talking about is making your entity shake when it has the fuse effect. To do that, you need to go to the visual and sounds tab of your entity and add a condition procedure to the entity shaking condition. And it will want to look something like what I have right here checking if the entity has the active potion custom fuse, and if so, returning true, else return false. Returns can be found in flow control, right down here, this one, and then the boolean values, or as mCreator likes to call them, logic values, are found right here at the top of the logic tab. Once you have done this, you can save this, Finish whatever changing you want to do to your entity, save your entity, and then you can run your test environment once your project has finished building. And once you're in, you can test your entity to see if it acts exactly how you want it to. If not, come back to all of your procedures, change the values here and there, and try again. Okay, once in here, let's spawn just the custom one for the moment. And let's test out what it does. Actually, I should get further away. Game mode, survival. And as you can see, it blows up just as expected. Oh boy. Lots of dirt. Is this the vanilla one? Yep. And then let's test out the vanilla one. And it behaves just like a normal creeper and blows up on you. So that's that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. And I shall see you next time.